Hey, what's up guys, it's Seth from Workbench, and this week we're gonna take a look at creating some infected text in cinema. So this week we're gonna take a look at creating this animation. We're gonna take it in parts. There's a lot to do, so let's get started. So first off, we're gonna start off with a plane and I'm just gonna do a quick grow on and I'm gonna show you a couple different techniques. So to start off with, we're gonna create a plane, 100 by 100, and then I'm gonna make it editable. And the reason for this is that I'm going to create a vertex map to do our grow on. So we need to make it editable. So then I'm going to create a vertex map. And that is by going to select and then set vertex weight. And I'm going to set that vertex weight to zero. And it'll give me vertex map like that. And then I'm going to turn on fields in the basic tab here. And when I do that, I will get this, which is just the freeze. So I'm going to set the freeze to grow. And then I'm going to adjust the radius to 20 and the effect strength to 50. And then inside the radius, I'm gonna make a random field. And I have that random field set to noise, and I'm using SEMA. I have the scale set to 1114, and then I'm adding a slight bit of animation. And then in the remap tab, I'm setting my inner offset to 78, and my strength to 100. So if I hit play here, it doesn't do anything. And the reason for that is you need a starting point. So I created these two spherical fields and those are my two starting points right there and right there. And certainly you can animate these in if you wanted to, but for our purposes, I just had it start there. So that's where the growth starts from those two points. So if I hit play now, you can see it's growing. You'll notice that this looks really choppy and we're gonna address that next. So I created a duplicate of this vertex map and this is what this looks like. You can see how I just softened it all up. So let me take you through this. So it's a duplicate, so it's the same settings, except for I have this vertex map in here, which is this our original vertex map copied in here and then I have that set to max. And then under the layer in here, I have it set to average. And what average is doing is it's fuzzing it out. It's almost as if you were blurring it. And you can see you can you have an adjustment here. You can adjust it. So I'm leave it at 15. And then I'm remapping it. You can see what effect this has here. So that. And then on the very top of the stack, I added another random field. I set that to noise and purlin. The scale is 250. This one is not animated and I have it set to subtract as it's blending mode. And then in the remap tab, I'm not doing anything. But you can see I can use this to isolate this more or less or increase it or decrease it. But the idea behind this one here is that I'm trying to soften my displacement so that it's not sharp edges. So if I go just to displacement, this is what it looks like like this. And I'll go in here and I will just adjust this real quick so you can see. See how that flattens it out? So you have a lot of control over what the shape looks like and how this all works just by stacking all this stuff together. So then inside my displacer, I have two vertex maps. So here's my original vertex map, and it's this one here. It's our second vertex map, which I named vertex map two, which gives us this here. And then I duplicated it or brought it in a second time. Again, I have it set to average. And with this, you can adjust how much you're actually seeing here. So you can soften it way out or just keep it nice and tight. And then for my shading here, I just have a color set up here so that it's essentially just giving me the max and this fall off is what's actually telling the plane where to displace. So now if I hit play on this, you'll watch. This is what it'll do. Let's see, we have like a growing thing going on. So this is a base setup for everything we're going to do. So I replaced the plane 
with this extruded zero and I had to change a couple of things. So let me show you what I changed here. So on the displacer, instead of using the fall off, for some reason it doesn't work on this shape. So I went in here and I created a restriction tag and I copied my vertex map into there. So now if I hit play, you can see it does the same, it's just on a different shape. Now to build the texture map. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you through the setup for the shader. To start off with, I've created another vertex map and I'm gonna be using this one to reveal the shader in parts. Um, so this is only gonna be used like as a mask. So let me show you how I created that one. So I'm using the same spherical fields as my starting point. I'm using the same setup for the freezes. The only difference is I have a random here and this one is Sema and it's 1373 in scale, no animation. And then I have another one on top of that one that's Perlin and that's 318 in scale. And both of those are set to overlay. And then I have my freeze set to max and inside there, like I did before, I have the random field with Sema in there and it's remapped like this with inner offset of 82. And then I have a duplicate of that on top set to max. I have that one set to average 71 for my radius, 16 for my effect strength. And that's basically it. So that's creating this mask here that you're seeing. So let me take you into the shader. So it looks complicated, but it's not really, you understand what's going on here. So here is that vertex map and I called it texture reveal. So, and I'm pumping that into a bunch of different places, but let's start down here with the displacement map. For the displacement map, I'm using Cinema 4D's noise. So there's a couple things you have to do to do that. So first off, I'm using Cinema 4D's noise here. I have that set to Sema, and this one has some animation to it, and they're real fine, like little bits. And I'm pumping that into a redshift texture node, and then I'm pumping that into a triplanar. And that's mostly because Cinema 4D's shaders just come in as a plane, so you end up with some edges, so the triplanar kind of helps with that. And then I'm using a constant pumped into the scale so that I don't have to change each one of these individually. Since I'm keeping them square, I can just adjust one value. And then I'm putting that into a redshift layer. And I'm using my vertex map as my mask for layer one. And that's going out to a displacement node. The scale is set to six, and that's outputting directly to the displacement. So next we'll go up here. This little grouping here, I've colored them all green so that I know what they are, but we're going into emission color here. So again, we're using a noise, and this is a layered one, but I'm actually only using one thing here. Um, let's show you what that is. And this is Poxo, and it has some animation to it. The values aren't super important, it's just kind of showing you what I'm doing here. Then I'm putting that into a redshift texture node, again, using a triplanar, and the same thing with that constant trick so that I can change them all at the same time. So then I'm pumping this triplanar into a redshift color layer, and I'm also using the vertex map here as a mask, and then I'm adding a red color as a multiply on top of layer one, and that's outputting into my emission color. So just to give you an idea of what this is doing, let me just isolate it. So this is what this layer is doing here. It's just giving us these little glowy red bits. So next, we're gonna take a look at our diffuse color here. So I'm just gonna pump the diffuse color in here. So here's our diffuse color, and this is being created with, again, another noise. And this one is our layered noise. So I have a couple things in here. I have the Poxo from before. Then I have electric on top of that set to add, and then set to exclusion, I have a SEMA, and I have it scaled down so that it's really small. And then again, that's going through a triplanar and a redshift texture node, and that's getting pumped into this guy here. So if we look at this, we're taking our texture reveal, 
and I'm pumping that through a ramp. That's what that ramp looks like. So we're using it for color. And I'm putting that in layer one. So that's basically our base layer. And I'm using it in layer one and not in base because if I wanted to mask a bit of it out or something like that, I can't do that with base, but I can do that in layer one. So then in layer two, I'm taking the output of our original color layer, which we we're using for displacement, and I'm pumping that into a ramp. Let me show you exactly what that guy looks like so you get, an, get a feel for what that is. So that's what's giving us these little veiny things. And I'm putting that in layer two, and I'm setting that to multiply. And then in layer three is all our noises. And those are being masked out by the vertex map texture reveal. So all together, this is what this looks like here. Here you go. And then here, just as a final thing, I decided that I wanted to add like a little bit of a pussy layer on top of everything. So what I did was I took my original vertex map and this one is vertex map two, which is what we're using for displacement. And then I'm pushing that through a ramp, this ramp here so that I can isolate certain bits of it. Let me show you what this looks like. You can see I'm just doing just the basically the raised areas. And then I'm putting that into layer four and I added a ramp with the color in it. So it's black on one end and green on the other. And then now if I go on and turn layer four on and render this out, I'll turn pump this back in here. And there you go. See, we got this extra like pussy layer on top. So that's it. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog at workbench.tv. I'm Sev. We'll see you soon.